In this video, we're gonna compare Jamie Foy and Ben DeGro's front crook technique. So obviously Jamie Foy is the king of front crooks. And by analyzing Jamie Foy's front crook technique, I was able to land front crooks despite not being a super advanced skater. It's a lot of people that are better than me that can't do this trick. So I like to think that I have a pretty good understanding of front crooked grinds, at least how Jamie Foy does his front crooks. But then I saw Ben DeGro made a trick tip on how he does them and he does them completely different than Jamie Foy. And so I wanted to try this out for myself. So in this video, you're gonna see footage of the day that I went to the skate park to try out Ben DeGro's front crook technique and just my overall comparison of the pros and the cons, the strengths and the weaknesses of one technique versus the other. So I hope you guys find it entertaining. So the first thing that we're gonna be looking at in terms of the two different styles of front crook between Jamie Foy and the Ben DeGro way of doing front crooks, is the angle at which they approach the ledge. So if you look at Jamie Foy, he comes at the ledge at a slight angle. So that way when he ollies up into the front crook, his board is pretty much already tweaked. So rather than ollieing and tweaking it into the front crook like that, because Jamie Foy already has a slight angle, he's just gotta make sure that he lands, you know, right there gets that pinch. He doesn't really need to worry about tweaking out the trick too much because that slight angle is already enough to really tweak out the front crook. The reason that that's so good is because if you don't tweak out your front crook, if you try and go like that, it's just going to roll off the edge of the ledge. On crooked grinds, both backside and front side, the goal is to get this wheel hanging on the edge of the ledge and try and push down and get two contact points, one on your truck and then one on your nose. That's why crooked grinds feel so stable, especially backside when you can have your whole foot sitting on there. Once you get into the lock and you're stable, like you're stable. There's a lot less balancing with front crooks than there is with say a nose grind, right? You get two points of contact, you can get really secure. And in order to get that security, you have to have your board tweaked. Because again, if it's straight, it's just gonna roll off like that. So that's how Jamie Foy approaches the front crook from what I've seen. A little bit of an angle so that when he gets in, his board is already tweaked. He can jump right into that stable pinch and then grind it out. Now with the Ben to grow way, Ben to grow, he says to come pretty much perpendicular to the ledge. I ride as parallel as I can to the ledge, straight ollie, land straight up and down in a nose grind on the wrong side of your truck. It's gonna pinch into front crook automatically. Give it a try, let me know how it works. So there's a couple downsides to this, but there's one huge upside, which I'll get to at the end. The downside of coming parallel to the ledge is like we talked about before, because you're so close to the ledge, you're almost alling straight into it like that. So it's easy for the board to flip out like that. Not only is it easy for the board to kind of flip on you, because you're not coming with that pre-tweaked approach. When I was trying it this way, I found a lot of times I would be hitting the ledge on the way up. So when you're coming at an angle, you kind of have space to decide where you want to pop to make sure you're getting onto the ledge. But when you're riding parallel, you don't have that momentum carrying you towards the ledge. So you naturally have to ride a little bit closer. So what this means is you really gotta focus on getting your board up and over the ledge into that front crook. Whereas when you come at a slight angle, like I said, you can kind of gauge your distance and feel it out and give yourself plenty of space to ollie up and get into a nice pinch. The next part we're gonna talk about is how these approaches compare in terms of actually holding the crooked grind. So for one thing with the bend to grow front crook technique, because you're coming super parallel, your momentum wants to carry you through the ledge. So with this bend to grow technique, you know, yes, it's harder to get up on the ledge, but once you're on there and you're locked into the front crook, to me, it seems like it wants to slide a lot easier. Whereas compared to the Jamie Foy, front crook where you're coming at it with a little bit more angle because you've got an angle coming into the ledge it makes it easier for your trucks to bite so i find that the more angle you come at the easier it is to get in but the harder it is for the, tr the trick to actually grind along the ledge whereas the bend to grow parallel version harder to get in because you have to navigate not hitting the ledge but once you're in there because your momentum is carrying you forward it actually is easier to start grinding. But the downside that I found with this bend to grow technique, as far as, you know, coming parallel, is he pretty much says you want to ollie up like you're trying to get into a nose grind, 
on this side of your truck, right? Straight ollie, land straight up and down in a nose grind on the wrong side of your truck, it's gonna pinch into front crook automatically. So he thinks of it like you get in straight and you can watch Ben DeGros front crooks. When he gets in, he's pretty straight and because he's on the edge, if he can manage to not let it roll that way, what happens is the board naturally starts to tweak itself out this way. But what I found trying that is that sometimes because it would start straight and then start swinging out, I found myself going from front crook into front nose, which I'd never really experienced before because I'd always kind of approach front crooks at an angle the Jamie Foy way and so the Jamie Foy way because you're already at an angle when you get in it's harder to start grinding but once you do start grinding it feels very stable and it feels like you can hold it for a really long time whereas the bend to grow way it feels like to me because you're parallel you get in the board swings out and it has the, the tail of your board is wanting to swing this way. It feels like the pinch reaches a point where you either need to get out or you're going to stick and fall off. Or it's gonna fall into front nose. So if you look at Ben DeGros front crooks, it's like this, it goes ollie up, Toe side nose grind, tweaks out, pops out. Whereas with Jamie Foy, he goes approach at an angle, ollie up, stick it, hold for pretty much as long as you want, and pop out. Again, I just think that has to do with the fact that when Jamie Foy gets into his crooked grinds, his tail is already in the position, his board is already crooked, so it's not swinging this way or that way, so it's easy to just kind of hold and freeze in that position and hold it for a long time. Now one thing I will say about approaching it at an angle, a lot of times I find myself overshooting and getting into front nose grind. Because you've got momentum going across the ledge, it's easy to accidentally overshoot the front crook and end up sliding into a front nose grind. Whereas when you come parallel like Ben DeGro says, it's really easy to hang this one wheel and get into that pinch position. However, to me, I feel like I'm fighting the, the board flipping out coming parallel. So yes, I'm, I'm placing it on the correct side of the truck more often when I'm parallel, but it's I feel like I have to really hang my toe off like this to fight the board from flipping over. But again, it's, it's trade-offs, right? You come at an angle, you have an easier time getting over, but you risk overshooting and getting into nose grind. You come parallel, you risk hitting on the way up, and you risk it flipping out like that more often, but it's easier to place it in the correct spot. Also, I've found that with front crook, the way to really get it locked in is to lead this trick with your heel. So you see how my heel is closer to the end of the ledge than my toe? My toe is behind. This position is the reverse position of a backside crook. So with the backside crook, your toe leads, your heel follows. So it's it's obvious that it would be the reverse on the opposite side, on the front crook. Your heel is gonna lead and your toe is going to follow. This is something that both of them do, Ben DeGro and Jamie Foy. They hang their toes off a whole bunch because this ball of your foot replaces your heel. So what your, your heel on a backside crook is right there holding down that pinched position. So on a back crook, you almost like can lift up your toes like that, and that will help you really get a clean grind on the back crook. The opposite is true on a front side crooked grind. It's almost like you wanna like lift your heel up. Not that it actually does that, the board responds and follows your foot, but you're kind of taking weight off of your heel so that the ball of your foot can then do what your heel was doing on the back crook. It, the ball of your foot presses right here between the nose and where your wheel is pinching to really hold down the front crook and create that stability holding the trick. Even though they both do that the same, I feel like that is one of the most crucial things to getting into this trick is you got to make sure your toes are almost pointed backwards, like at a diagonal angle that way. Now in terms of popping out of the front crook both skaters are doing it pretty much the same way you just got to really put all of your weight on the ball of your foot right here and you kind of like shove the board forward and get weightless while your toes kind of like pull it like that i would say that i found that it was more comfortable for me popping out of the bend to gross front crook where you come parallel the board tweaks out and then when it reaches its kind of full tweak then you pop out for whatever reason for me the board ended up straight and i was able to roll away more often than with the Jamie Foy front quirk where I approach at an angle, 
I'm really in there locked in really solid. It's almost like I'm so locked in that when I go to pop out, it wants to like overturn on me and do like a half front shove. Now that could just be, you know, lack of experience, but I did notice trying the bend to gross technique, come, trying to come more parallel that I was able to get out of the trick more consistently. I think for me, the bend to grow way of doing this is probably easier, but I feel like you are more limited in terms of, you know, you're not able to hold the trick as long. I feel like you're not, you don't have as much control. Whereas I feel like every time I've done it before, just focusing on Jamie Foy's technique, I've been able to hold it better and feel more solid and more locked in when things went right. However, you know, with the bend to grow technique, I've got to say that things went right more often it's more simple to just come parallel and think toe side nose grind as well this is a trick that tends to jam up really easily so I feel like you have to use or at least I have to use an insane amount of wax to get this trick to go but obviously if you're coming more parallel like bend to grow that's more momentum going along the ledge with the grind so it's a little bit more smooth that way the thing that I just really don't like about it though is the way that your board tweaks and wants to like carry you into front nose to me, it almost feels like I get into the front crook and it's like a ticking time bomb. Like I've got to get in and get out. And I feel like this front crook I did is probably one of the cleanest front crooks that I've done. However, you can see how quick it was, right? Get in, pop out. Very structured, but I think I prefer ones that I've done in the past where I was able to really sit on it for a second before popping out. But regardless, I feel like those are two good approaches. I'm going to keep playing around with both of them. I want to be able to do it both ways to kind of incorporate the best of both worlds and I'm sure sometimes Ben DeGroze does it the Jamie Foy way and sometimes Jamie Foy does it the Ben DeGroze way. It's not like they only do it one way. I feel like this is just a good way to kind of like break down generally the differences between the, their approaches from my point of view. So if you did like this video, you need to check out this one. It's the full breakdown of Jamie Foy's front crooks. I go way more in detail in that video than I did in this video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to make every single day a Friday and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.